All right, folks. Welcome to the guts of this giant ship. We gotta get inside if we can because uh, the cold is killing us. If we don't. Yes, folks. In this game, the cold is pretty much one of our worst enemies. So, getting somewhere to heat up is gonna be our first objective. Ah, it's working. Excellent. Right, so uh, in the lower left of the screen, you can already see like a gauge. Um. Oh, look at the, look at these ice effects. Oops, look at that. Beautiful. The outer part of this gauge signifies how warm or cold it is in the area where we're in. And the inner part signifies how cold or warm we ourselves are. So it's basically our health gauge. What the hell is that? Hmm. Hi, doggy. was like a flashback or something. Well, that will be explained shortly. Let us try and find a warmer spot. Now you can tell by looking at the gauge that it is... Ah, another one. That it is quite a bit warmer here than, than outside. So I guess we're, we're making progress. Let's, let's and there's the ship in the in the background. You see it? It's a bit difficult against the fog, but uh, what's going on here? Oh no! Oh god! This is bad. Very bad. It looks like we're on the other side of this little ravine now. So that's uh, it's making progress, I guess. We do have the ability to sprint, but we are currently very weak. Uh, the sprinting is indicated by that little yellow bar in the gauge. But it, it runs out pretty much immediately because we are so exhausted right now. Look, okay, it's gone already. I haven't even sprinted like two steps. But that's fine, we can just walk. Another one of those apparitions. Let's walk into it. Uh -huh. There we are. There's the ship in the distance. Oh boy. It's happening all over again. Moving, dude. Get moving. Well, so much for that particular bridge, I guess. But we are on the other side, so that's fine. Right. Looky here. Let's interact with it. Must have hurt. And the dog is still there, okay. Right. We're now stuck here, but uh, we need we need to get to the ship as quickly as possible. Alexander Nesterov, a junior research assistant at the Pole 21 Polar Station, is due at coordinates 86 degrees 21 north. 74 degrees 57 east on the 27th of March 1981, where he will board the nuclear icebreaker North Wind. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, folks, that is exactly who we are. We're playing as Alexander Nesterov, and the ship that we find ourselves in is the North Wind. Atomic Icebreaker. Big ship. But first we gotta get there. See it there in the distance? Let's follow these dogs, because uh, the dogs will know where to go. They are much more comfortable in this kind of environment than we are. It's a pretty long stretch to walk still, but we gotta make it, because we can survive out here, not for long. So let's, uh, let's, let's make sure to follow these dogs. They will guide us, I think. Maybe it's just one dog, even. I don't know where the other ones went, but it seems that only one is left. Right. Gotta walk underneath all this massive ice. There's the dog. Alright. We're almost there, but we need to somehow get inside. Hey. We can sprint a little bit right now to make this a little bit faster. But we are slow and we are weak, so look at that, there's a little nuclear symbol there. I like that. Everything is white. Gotta get inside. Yes, dog. Now it's gone. I guess it ran off or something. I, I don't know. The, the dog is gone, but I think we got a shot now. We gotta get in here. There we go. And yes, folks, this is exactly where the game started. So let's pick that up. What is that? That's the screen from the intro. It's the first page. And it's gone. Yes, folks, this was basically us reliving our own uh, attempt to save ourselves. A little time loop, if you will. And this mechanic will become very prominent in this game. Both for us to change things and to learn about, uh, about the backstory of the people that live here. Or lived here, maybe more, more like that. Mm -hmm, look at that. Right, looks like we found one of the sailors. We're clearly too late for him. He's completely frozen up. Let's turn on this machine. Now you can witness a little bit how the, the engine here works. So the engine starts running, and as you can tell by the gauge in the lower left gets a lot hotter and the ice starts to melt from the walls and uh, yeah the entire environment changes a little bit that's good news oh, what's this fire that wasn't here before <gasps> how is it going the cans are in place no sign yet sit down warm up while it burns I brought two more crates to dry. Sit down. Warm up while it burns. And that's what we're gonna do. Now, as you can tell, um, our inner warmth is only very slowly rising. That's because we wear Arctic gear and are isolated. That protects us in cold areas a little bit. At least temporarily, but it also means we are going to heat up a lot slower. Well, we could simply go next to a source of heat and take off our gloves and heat up a lot more quickly. Whoa! What the hell is that thing? Looks humanoid, but... oh boy. And, as you can tell, it destroyed the fire, and the exterior warmth is reduced a lot now. But we are still, internally, we are still pretty warm. 
thanks to our uh, to our gear, basically. That would come in very handy. Hey, the the, the dead guy is gone. Now he's behind us. Oh God, he has an axe. What the hell is going on here? What are these creatures? He's back to being frozen up. But the machine is still running. It's gonna warm up this place. We can also use that machine. Slowly heal ourselves here, but that's really not the point. Instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and exit through this door. We get our first weapon. Yes, it's exactly what it looks like. It's a key. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a lock and a chain, and we use that to punch stuff. Not the most sophisticated weapon, but uh, that's the first weapon we get. We can punch these uh, little boards out of the way. And now we can make our way further. Look at that dude. Looks like he froze in, in like the water there. That's not a good way to go, is it? Hey dude. He tried desperately from the looks of it. But it probably wasn't enough, was it? He died a hero. And he came back! And this is our first actual fight. So, okay, this game has melee combat. We can block and attack and also try to use uh, like combo attacks and whatnot. But the main thing is hit them and hit them hard. Alright, there we go. Well, rest in peace now. If you can. Let's, uh, let's turn this on. Oops, that's not what I wanted to. <laughs> there we go. And yes, um, glowing lights and the like also function as heat sources, so that's good. Hey, another dude tried to stop the water coming in. I wonder what happened to him. And there's your answer. Another one of those monsters. And do you see that? When we get hit, we lose our heat. And we get these cold effects on our screen. That's exactly what it looks like. Our heat and our health is, is the same measure. And the enemies cause us to lose our heat. So let's recharge on this lamp. Because that thing really took a lot of, out of me. And it looks like uh, we can continue on up here. Which is a good thing, I guess. Right. So clearly this, this place is overrun with monsters, but we don't really have... Oh boy. Well, you don't really have much of a choice, do we? I mean, uh, it's, either, it's either the storm outside where we cannot survive for long. It's either, it's either that, or, or it's trying to fend for ourselves inside this frozen grave and, and try to figure out what happened here. Looks like the entire compartment here has been flooded. Wow, look at that. Water's rising. And quickly. Oh boy. And look, look how cold it is in here. Look on the external gauge. Now we're getting close to the heat. And yeah. I think that, that, that should basically explain how, how the heat and health system works in this game, right? So always look for heat sources and warm up. And yeah. Oh boy, well, another one. Luckily these guys are, well, unarmed. They will simply punch at you. And they aren't the fastest guys either. Looks almost like uh, we are causing them heat damage by hitting them. Because of the, uh, you know, those little fiery ripples that uh, tra travel across their, their bodies every time we hit them. 
And conversely, when they hit us, we take freezing damage. Speaking of freezing, it's another one of those of those visions. But this time it's not a vision of ourselves. This time it's a different person. Let's see what happens, right? Through the door and up the stairs, quickly! It won't hold much longer! Okay. And yes, you're, you're seeing correctly, we are now within the body of the person who died here. And we get a chance to make things right, to save this guy's life. Or soul, or I don't know what. Come on, buddy! We gotta run! Yes, this is the introduction... Whoa! Oh boy. This is the introduction to what's called a mental echo. The people who died here, they left behind these echoes, in which we can... This way, quickly! I'll hold the door! Move it! Come on! Alright. Looks like we made it just in time. Yes. So we relive their last moments in life. And we get a chance to fix their mistakes and hopefully save them. I think we just did something good. But uh, there are bound to be many others like him. And that's us. Nesterov. Captain, the rod shows formation of sea ice all along our course. The rod, as in the divining rod? Another clairvoyant gadget of yours. Sir, clairvoyance is for shamans. This is cutting-edge scientific equipment, virtually foolproof. Do you know why it is called the rod? Well, yeah, you had it, sir. Named after a divining rod, a stick used to search for water underground was real popular back in the days of wooden ships and navigating under the stars. Times change, but some things remain much the same. The ship must respect you. You must listen to her, understand her, talk to her, live with her one-on-one -on -one for many years. Then you become more than just a captain. You become a part of something bigger. That's great, but isn't it just pretty words? Sir, it seems to me all you've got to do is hold on to the wheel. When are you going to let me try, by the way? You don't waste any time, do you? Well, if you're keen, try this for now. And that was another type of vision we just encountered. Be prepared for those folks. Mental echoes and visions like these will be one of the main ways to experience the story. Quite interactively most of the time. Sometimes more in cutscene form. Oh, what? What happened here? Oh, I... I clipped through the door. That's not supposed to happen, is it? Well, <laughs> well, we opened it from this side, so everything's fine now, isn't it? I have no idea what just happened there. That never happened to me before. Whatever. Yes, Nesterov seems to have some hidden talents. Whether that comes naturally to him... What a rude interruption. Well, whether these talents come naturally to Nesterov or not is not entirely clear. Might also have something to do with this place, you know. It's uh, 
it's not natural. Maybe he's he's a he's like a telepath or something. I wouldn't know. The important thing is that we we do see visions and that we can interact with the people who died here. So it's basically a ghost story, I guess. Oh boy. And it looks like the people of this ship were attacked by these creatures long before the end already. So whatever happened here, it happened gradually and and step by step. <sighs> this this lock and chain is a bad weapon. Luckily, we just come across the wheel. Look at that. Yep, this is our second weapon. Don't worry, we'll, we'll get more proper weapons later on, but uh, this one is already pretty good. It deals a ton of damage. It's a bit slower than, than the lock-in chain, but uh, it's much better otherwise, so it's great, I think. What the? Okay. Looks like that guy was just waiting down in the water for us. Well, let's punch him with our new wheel. And it seems he just decided to flee instead. Also, pay attention to, to how fire and light interact when uh, when you actually close when when they are close to the creatures. I hope you just saw that blue fire that replaced the actual flame there for a little while. Just small details like that, you know, a lot a lot of environmental interactions like that, which I think really really aids this game. Oh. Speaking of environments, this does not look safe. Let's try to maybe heal up a little bit. Oh! Lucky us, but I guess the rest of the ice is relatively stable at least. Let's heal up. There we go, nice and cozy. Now we're gonna save. Let's see here. Ugh. They can crawl too. You stay away from me. I got a wheel. What are you doing? Okay, I guess it's gone for the time being. Let's let's move quickly. So let's turn on the light. I want to see some stuff actually. That's much better. And it looks like we just found another mental echo. But this, folks, will have to wait a little while. We'll try to save this poor man in the next episode. See you then, folks. Bye.